Good afternoon. This is Dr. Pauline Hughes in Spiritual Mind, Spiritual You. And as you can see, I'm flying solo today in the company of Pastor Henry Schaefer running the board. And so we give God the glory for a great show today. Uh, the name of our show today is going to be talking about truth because truth is everything. And until you know the truth about who you are and where you're going, you know, you're just stuck and you're just lost. But before we get into that, I want to thank everyone that attended Holy Spirit Refreshing Conference. My gosh, did the Holy Spirit not show up? <laughs> Say yeah. Yeah, he did. He really showed up. It, it was just amazing. It was awesome. And, you know, every conference is different. And you know, as I always said, it's really not a conference. It's an, it's, it's an experience. And so the Holy Spirit showed up and he did what only he could do. And, and I praise him for it. But, you know, you have next year, you know, haven't really quite finalized a date yet, but we will set finalize a date so that you can be a part of what God wants to do in you. You know, I'm a firm believer that there's just some things that's never going to happen for you until you're in the presence of the Lord. And so this is a time that you have eight hours, sometimes 10 hours. It just all depends on where we are and how God's going to do it. You have all that time to rest in front in the presence of the Lord, to be naked and unashamed in the presence of the Lord so that God can heal you from the inside out. Listen, my friends. I praise God for doctors. I work with them every day. But a doctor cannot heal you. Only the Lord, only our great physician, only the King of Kings can heal you where you hurt. And he heals you from the inside out. And, you know, and I think sometimes we don't think about that many times we need healing from the time we were in our mother's wombs. You know, the Bible says that um, David says, he says, I was born in iniquity in my mother's womb. And so many times we come from our mother's womb healed i mean wounded in our soul and then here we are 30 40 years old then that wound begins to show up into something that we never suspected so i want to encourage you when we start advertising for uh holy spirit refreshing 2019 i want you to be there well god has blessed me you know with my cd of course it's called presence soaking in the presence of the lord you want to get this cd you don't want to miss it I'm going to play track four at the end of this at the end of the show today, and that that uh, track is presence of release. And so in this track is exactly what's going to happen. The thing I love about presence of release is that I had everything written out, ready to uh, do what God had given me to do, which I thought that God had given me to do. And right before the recording, the Holy Spirit said, mm -mm, "You're not doing that." And so track four is totally brought forth in the spirit of the Lord and it's called presence of release. Well, we're going to play this CD uh, this track at the end of the show. And we're going to allow the Holy spirit to launch you into the release of things that's in your life. I know you want to be released in the things of God. God has great plans for you. Jeremiah says that God has a plan for you and that plan is to prosper you and not to harm you. And of course, my friends, you want to be a part of that. So as I said today, we're going to be talking about truth in you. You know, um, a friend of mine that I just met, which I thought was uh, just really awesome word uh, that he had given me. And what he said was, stop believing what you see and start seeing what you believe. <laughs> I want to repeat that again because that you need to write that down and you need to read it to yourself a couple of times you need to read it out a lot because the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god once you read something it goes back into your ear gate and gets into your spirit man and causes that baby within you to jump so i'm going to read it again stop believing what you see because look what we see in the natural according to what god wants is a total lie you know you you can see all day long that you may be sick, but the word of God says that by your stripes that you are healed. By his height, by his stripes you are healed. The Bible says Jesus was bruised for your iniquities. The trespasses of your sin was upon him, and by his stripes you are healed. My friends, that's the truth. That's the truth. And many times because we don't see a quick manifestation, and God can manifest that thing quickly. He can do it. But we don't know why he does what he does. I mean, I know there were certain math uh, problems that I had to learn how to do. And many times I didn't get it the first time that I did the math problem. But the more I did it, the more the answer came to me. So I want to read it again. Stop believing what you see and start seeing what you believe. Now, that sounds like vision to me. <laughs> vision. 
And and Proverbs twenty nine eighteen says, where there is no vision, the people perish. I want to ask you, do you have a vision for your life today? Because the Holy Ghost has a vision. He knows where you're going. And the way that we grab that vision, we get that vision through prayer. I think we have to step back and understand that we are a spiritual being. You know, yes, I'm in this body to do what I'm doing with you right now. You know, to talk to you face to face by camera. But at the end of the day, I'm spirit. We're body, soul, and spirit. You know, my body just goes along for the ride. You know, the body has no say so really. What really empowers you is your soul and spirit. Your spirit man is willing. Your spirit man is already healed. But you have to allow your spirit man to come into your wounded soul so that you can be healed from the inside out. You know, at third John one says, brethren, I wish above all things that you prosper and be of good health, even as your soul prospers. Listen to that. You're only going to be in good health even as your soul prospers. So your soul has to know the truth so that you can be made free or set free, whatever your translation is. So Proverbs chapter 29 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. I want to read to you what it says in the Amplified Version. I love the way it says it. It says, where there is no vision, no revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained, but happy and blessed is he who keeps the law of God. That's the Amplified Version. Let me read that again. Where there is no vision, no revelation of God. Now I want you to hold on to that. No revelation of God and his word. The people are unrestrained. Now, when we think about the revelation of God, when God created you, you were on his mind. You were in the thought and the plan of God when he created you. God is a God of vision. You're created in the image of God. You know, we're not talking about hands, toes, and, and facial features. We're talking about your spirit, man. Your spirit, man, is created in the image of God. And how do we allow that, that image to become who God planned it to be? It's through prayer. And, and, and I, don't, I, I don't understand why prayer is not preached more talked about more because prayer is the foundation of who you're going to become and who you're going to recognize who God is in your life. Prayer. Prayer is everything. The thing I love about prayer is that prayer has the ability to get everything moving. It gets the devil moving. It gets the angels in your life moving and it gets the purpose and vision of God in your life moving. I want to uh, say something here. We're more concerned about what people say outside of ourselves than we are in getting the revelation of God. My friends, when you were born, you were born alone, even twins. You know, I, I taught high school one time and I had a, 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 some students that thought that twins come here at the same time. Oh, no, they don't. There's one born and then another one comes behind that, that each other. But you came here alone. And there are times that you're going to have to walk alone and then and definitely you're going to die alone. And so we have to understand that we have to come before the Lord in prayer alone, seeking his face alone. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. So I guess I have to ask you, what do you know about truth? What do you know about the truth of who you are in God because until you know the truth about you you will uh, begin to just stumble all over yourself continually you know at the conference we said that this is the year of the open door and the open door is only going to happen is when you know the truth I want to read to you Romans chapter 8 29 and then I have a couple of more scriptures but Romans 8 29 says for God foreknew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. God chose you. That, that's the first truth that you need to understand. God chose you. God called you by name. And that's it. And so what we have to understand that where, where people on the outside of us don't accept us, that cannot be a downfall for you because people are not going to always accept you. People are not going to always approve you. But you know something? You've already been approved and you've already been accepted in the beloved. God has chosen you. He has called you by name. And so many times we give up because we feel like people are not accepting us my friends let me tell you somebody eagle <laughs> a eagle have to fly alone 
and an ego uh, does better, better. Listen to me. An ego does better when there's a storm because the ego knows that he flies with the storm. And so in James, it says in James, it says many, it talks about that when the trials of the tribulation come, it says count it all joy. But we haven't been taught to, to count trials and tribulations as joy. But if we would count our trials and tribulations as joy, the joy is, is that we get to go deeper with God because only God knows why that trial is in your life. I guess a couple of weeks ago when I was at church, um, Pastor Schaefer preached a message on truth <laughs> and he talked about um, a trial versus being bullied. I don't know what the pastor remembers that, but the trial takes you into deeper things of God. The trial opens up revelation of what God wants to do in your life where the bully, and this is just my definition, a bully spirit comes to beat you down so bad that you don't even recognize who you are nor your identity because it comes to tear you apart so that you don't even feel like you have purpose. But a trial is just like a test. You know, when a teacher teaches, a teacher teaches everything you need to know for the test. Well, your trial, my friend, is your test. And you cannot grumble and complain in the test. You have to be still and know that God is God and he will release you through that, through that trial. So, first of all, you have to understand that life is going to be full of trials and life is going to be full of tests. Because the Bible says many of the trials and the tribulations of the righteous, but God will deliver you from every one of them. Let me ask you something today. Are you in a trial? Are you in a trial right now? Or do you feel like you're going through turbulent tribulation? Well, God is waiting for you to call on him. The Bible says all those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All those that call on the name of the Lord will be delivered. When God writes, to, when God wrote his word, his word was for his children. You know, it amazes me how we study the word and we and we we study the word and we take this word and we say, oh, well, I'm going to go witness to such and such and I'm going to go and minister to such and such, you know, but the word is written to you. Romans chapter 12 says that, that this word is going to transform us into the image of God. This is a daily walk is 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 a is a is a walk that I have to make up my mind that every morning that I'm going to be a part of. And so when we ask Jesus Christ to come into our life, he sent the Holy Spirit to be in us, to teach us and lead us and guide us in this word. He already knows. He already knows where we're going. A matter of fact, let me read really, really quickly um, Psalms 139, which, which is really a great scripture. And I love it. <clears throat> it says, oh, Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. The things that we're doing, are we doing it because we're doing it because we love God? <laughs> Is, is that the truth of why you sing in the choir? Is that the truth of why you serve on the deacon board? Is that the truth of why you serve on the deacon is board? Are you doing it because you love God? I, I think it flows back to one thing in, in, the, in the Ten Commandments. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your being. I believe that's it in a nutshell. Because when we do things out of, out of flesh or out of vainglory, what happens is, is that in the midst of serving, we don't get healed. I believe that when I'm in the calling that God has called me, the more I do that, the more I see his face and the more he heals me in the midst of serving. But when we don't seek his face for what he's called us to do, then we end up angry urshers. We end up being angry psalmists. We end up being angry piano players because the Bible says do all things for the glory of God. I want you to think about it today. Are you walking in truth and are you doing what God has called you to do because you are, because you are in love with him? Do you love God? How, how would I know if I love God? The same way I know if I love my husband, but my love for God is, is greater. You know, my husband, I talk to him every day. Are you talking to God every day? He's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. He knows everything about you. He knows, he knows what's going to happen in the next second. My husband does it. And so I want to develop this relationship with God called prayer so that I can seek his face so that he can lead me and guide me in the way I'm supposed to go. Let me continue reading Psalms 139. It says, you know me when I sit down or stand up, you know, my thoughts, even 
when I'm afar off. Who can do that other than the Lord? You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it. You go before me and you follow me. You place your hand of blessing upon me. That's our king. My favorite part of the scripture is, is um, Psalms 39, Psalms 139, starting with verse 16. It says, you saw me before I was born. That's truth. God is a God of vision. And you know, this is just my picture. In Genesis chapter one, when it said that the, that the world and the earth was null and void, it said that God spoke and the Holy Spirit moved. I believe that God had vision of what he was going to speak before he got it out of his mouth. God is a God of vision. You are God. You are a child of vision. And so the Holy Spirit was standing there waiting, brooding, hovering in the presence of God, waiting for God to speak so that he could create. Well, listen, my friends, the same Holy Spirit that was in Genesis chapter one is the same Holy Spirit that's in the room with you right now, in the room with me right now, waiting for us to speak so he can create. Uh, The Bible says in Psalms that the angels of the Lord, they are hearkening. They're waiting for the word of God. They're waiting for you to speak the word so that they can go forth and create and bring forth what you need. Are you speaking the word today? Because, you know, I, I don't believe that angels um, move to, oh, I don't feel well. I think they move to God's word. I think they, I think they move to when you're in a situation. I think they move to you're the head and not the tail. I'm the head and not the tail in this. I'm above and not beneath. I'm blessed going in and blessed going out, blessed in the city, blessed in the field. They know that word. And they are right here in your presence. They're right here in this room with me. And as I speak the word of God, angels descend to my father and they bring back the answer to earth. They bring it to me. And I think that many times we need to unlearn a lot of things. We need to unlearn. We have been taught that we have to beg and we have to plead and we have to ask God to do what it is that we need when he already knows what you need. And, and when, and, and as being a vessel of prayer, I have found that when I'm praying, I'm not so much praying anything I need, but I'm praying the will of the father. He says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God already has a plan for what he wants uh, prayed forth. And so it's a blessing to be a part of praying forth what he has called us to pray for the truth. Listen, my friends, I don't want you to see your children the way that you see them. Let's go back to this statement that I said earlier. Stop believing what you see and start seeing what you believe. What do you believe? What do you believe? Hmm? The word says that that those that believe it it, is in Mark. It says to those who believe they will lay hands on the sick. Do you believe that when you lay hands on the sick that they will recover? Do you believe that? Well, that belief system finds finds its strong foundation in the secret place in prayer. When I'm in prayer, I become who God wants me to be in the spirit realm. Because I am spirit. We get to travel in the spirit through prayer. Prayer is everything. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. And, And that's the neat thing about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit prays to us with utterance, utterances that cannot be uttered. That, you know, the enemy doesn't know what we're praying, but we're praying mysteries, mysteries of God. You know, I can wake up at two or three o'clock in the morning and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. And God could be praying about something that's going on in, in Vietnam or Cambodia or Israel or anything. It's his time to use me as his vessel to pray for his perfect will. And, you know, I kind of I have to chuckle sometimes because when God wakes us up in the wee hours of the morning or even at six o'clock in the evening, when we're praying, we're not praying our to do list. We're praying his will. You know, when we stand before the Lord, don't you want to stand before the Lord knowing that you have prayed forth what God wanted in the earth? Don't you want to stand before him? And he says, I want to show you something. When I woke you up at three o'clock in the morning. If you didn't pray, then this area would have been bombed. Or if you didn't pray, this child would have lost his life. God is moving with the help and the prayers of the saints. Do you not want to be part of that? 
Well, today I'm very thankful that you're joining us on Facebook and YouTube, WUCC 99.9 FM. We are live on Facebook and I want you to join us and be a part of what God is doing and what God is saying in this hour. And to consider, were you in your, in your life of truth? Let me go back to Psalms 139. It says, you saw me before I was born. That's the truth. <laughs> you know, before your mother ever smiled in your face and, 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 and kind of uh, do, did your cheats like this. God already did that. He already smiled on you. He already approved you. He already knows you. And there may be some of you out there right now that you're struggling with your identity. Your identity is in Christ. Your identity is not in this world system. Your identity is in the spirit. And how do I, how do I become that identity? How do I grasp that identity through prayer? It's about truth. And so I, I want to encourage you to um, move forth and knowing the truth about you. Here's a good one right here in Psalms 139 verse 16. <clears throat> it says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every day of my life was recorded in your book, in God's book. And see, this is the key. When Jeremiah says that God knows the plan that he has for you, and that plan is to prosper you and not to harm you, a plan to do you good all the days of your life. I love some translations that says, to your expected end. How do we get into the plan of God? We pray. God already has the plan. And when we get in prayer, it activates the Holy Spirit to begin to move in the earth to do what God has called us to do before the foundations of the earth. You know, it, it's, it's enough talking about the devil did this and the devil did that. The devil cannot do any more than what you allow him to do. We yield our vessels to him. We yield our vessels to him. God has already given us the manual to live our lives by. And so this is the thing. God has written a book about me. The Holy Spirit has already read that book. It would behoove me every day to get before the Lord and say, Lord, what is your plan for the day? And I don't want to miss it. I don't want to be on page 15 and, I'm, and I should be on page three. Or I don't want people in my life that should have been in chapter two. And here I am on chapter, chapter 29 and they're still in my life and possibly causing a lot of havoc. Not saying that there are, there were bad people. But just saying is, God, are they supposed to be in my life in this season? That's the key. We need to be released into God's perfect plan, his perfect will for our lives. His plan, his will. See, because when you said Jesus Christ come into my life, I'm a sinner, save me by grace. It, you don't have any more rights. You're not your own. You've been purchased with a great price. And through that purchasing of that great price with Jesus Christ's life, his blood that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It made the way that you may come boldly to pray that you may come boldly to the throne of grace to, you know, I mean, it's, it's such a privilege and such an honor to just get up and just lay in the presence of the Lord saying nothing, just laying in his presence. And you know what I've learned that when I get up in the wee hours, I don't know what to pray. Sometimes I don't even begin to pray in the Holy spirit. I'll just lay in the floor and just lay in there. All of a sudden the Lord begins to speak. Do you know, do you need to hear the voice of the Lord today? Well, I want to encourage you to just be still and know that he's, that he's God. You know, I'm sure that when Moses was standing before that Red Sea, here was, you know, the seas in front of him. What could he do? He couldn't walk on it. He's got all these complaining Israelites behind him. And then behind him, he's behind them. They have his Pharaoh's army ready to kill them in a minute. But the, but the word of the Lord came to him. And said, be still and know that I'm God. I want to encourage someone today to be still, to be still, just get still. You know, forget about what you're seeing and look in this word and begin to believe what you begin to see what you believe. And, and, and many of us, we're going to have to change our concept because we're believing a lot of things that we should not be seeing. I, I believe that Genesis through Revelation is our visionary compass is our compass is 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 the word that we should be meditating on day and night you know it's like you 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 can't you can't decide to walk in God's word today on Monday and then on Tuesday because because the things you see with your natural eyes have changed 
then you begin to agree with that. I want to encourage you to agree with God's word. God's word is true and it will not return to him void. It is active and is sharper than any two edged sword. According to the book of Timothy, God's word will turn things around for your good. Hmm? It will. You know, let's, let's say that, that you're having financial difficulties. The Bible says in Philippians 419 that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Now listen to that. His riches and glory according to Christ Jesus. Well, how do I get into glory? I get into glory through praise and worship. I get into glory through praise and worship. I get into glory through praise and worship. Paul and Silas knew that. The Bible says that around midnight, Paul and Silas begin to sing hymns and praises unto God. And I know that they had to be in great pain because they had been beaten brutally. But they understood that if they could just get into the presence of the Lord, that things would turn around for them. And so they began to praise God. They began to release hymns. They began to speak the word. And the Holy Spirit, God showed up in an earthquake and not only released Paul and Silas, but released everyone around them. You know, praise and worship is not a denominational thing. It really isn't. It's a word thing. I, I, the thing I love about God's word is that it is active and it is voice activated. And so as you begin to praise God, as you begin to give him the glory, Psalms 150 says it talks about let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Do you have breath? Huh? That's not a Pentecostal thing. That's not a Baptist thing. That's not a Methodist thing. It's a word thing. Hmm. And, and the Bible says that, that when we begin to praise God, when we begin to give him glory, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. I always get a vision that when I'm praising God, that he comes and he has a seat right in front of me. And, you know, and I don't know about you, but, you know, most daddies, especially girls, even when they're grown, we can so adore our fathers. They'll begin to bless us. Well, your father wants you to adore him through praise, through worship, through adoration, by letting him know. He already knows it, but, but by letting him know that you know that apart from him, you can do nothing. That he is the great physician. You know, I, I thank God for doctors. I work with them every day, but they can't heal you. They cannot heal you. But I believe that you can get in such high praise and worship. I believe that heaven's gates of, of healing will come upon you and begin to release you, begin to release you into that healing balm of Gilead, that God will heal you instantly. I believe that that I believe that that happens. And so I want to encourage you to change your belief system. I want you to think about just a minute. What do I believe? What do I believe about me? What do I believe about God? Because I'm going to tell you something, that's what's got you. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. What are you thinking? What are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about yourself? I, I, think, I think that's the key. And I think sometimes the negative things that we say about ourselves, I think the people on the outside enhance that. To it does become our belief system. What do you believe? You know, when God... Um, gave me the vision for Holy Spirit refreshing. Nobody could see it. <laughs> a matter of fact, everybody thought I was crazy. But I just kept taking that vision back to God in prayer. I just kept taking that vision back to God in prayer. And when we first got started, I, I had one musician, which was my husband, and a drummer. That's all I had. And me <laughs> as the intercessor. But I just kept praying. I kept laying in the midnight hour. I kept uh, doing a uh, uh, third and fourth watch prayers. I just kept laying it before the Lord. And then all of a sudden, um, God just started growing that ministry because that was in his heart and that was in his mind. And if God believed it enough to give me that vision, then I had to believe enough that he could grow it. <laughs> and he did. He grew it. And so what is the vision that God has given you in this season? What has God said to you? What is he speaking into your life? If God has spoken to your life that, that you're going to college, then you have to get the vision for that. I remember one day I was cleaning my house <clears throat> and I was walking by a mirror. You know, I was telling Pastor Shave a little bit earlier. God is always speaking to me in the mirror. And so I was passing by the mirror as I was cleaning up. And as I looked into the mirror, the Lord spoke to me and he says, one day you will be Dr. Pauline Melinda Hughes. And I just kind of looked in the mirror because I was just shocked that God would say that because that wasn't anything that I desired. And so after the Lord spoke me, spoke that to me, I moved away from the mirror and the Holy Spirit says, go write it down. The Bible says, write the vision down to make it plain. 
And so I wrote it down. I made the vision plain. And then 10 years later, there I was walking across the stage, Dr. Pauline Melinda Hughes. That was the vision of God for my life. Let me tell you something, my friends. God did not put you in this earth to be struggling the way that you're struggling. You know, yes, we're going to have trials. You know, forget about the trials. Let's look at the victory on the end. There is a victory that lies in God's word for you. You're victorious. I don't care what you're going through. You win in the end. If you just hold on to the truth from Genesis to Revelation, you win. I don't care what's going on. I was telling the ladies that I had a, did a women's group uh, last Saturday in Gibson, South Carolina, Gif, Gibson, Georgia. And I was telling the ladies there that their husbands might be unsaved. I said to them that um, my husband would come home on Fridays and I would help him get ready to go to the nightclub. I would help him. I would have all his clothes laid out. And after I laid his clothes out, he would come in. I would help him get dressed. And then after he would leave to go to the nightclub, I would put on his, my husband was in the military, so I would put on his full fatigue, everything he had on that day. I would put even down to his boots. And I mean, granted, they were too big, but I would put them on. And I would walk the floor and I would pray in the Holy Spirit for my husband. And now as I was praying in the Holy Spirit for my husband, this is the scripture I, was, I would use. I would say, blessed is my husband that does not sit in the council of ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But my husband's delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law. In God's law, does my husband meditate day and night? And my husband should be like a tree that's firmly planted by the rivers of water. I would walk the floor and I would pray that scripture and I would play. I would pray in the Holy Spirit until I was exhausted. I was not going to come off that wall because I knew that if my husband died that night, that my husband would be in a devil's hell. Huh. And the vision of the Lord was that if I be saved, me and my entire household need to be saved too. See, sometimes we get so aggravated with our household. We'll go down the street and we'll minister and we'll do everything to the people down the street. But what you fail to understand is that when the enemy come in to fight you, he's not coming down the street. He's coming in your household. So I need my household to be saved as you need your household to be saved. And your first diligence of prayer should be for your household. So back to the story. I'm walking the floor and I probably did this for about three months. And at the end of the three months, I was laying in bed one night and I was halfway asleep and I opened, I didn't even hear my husband come in the house. I was so exhausted. And when I opened my eyes, he was standing on top of me. He was looking down at me and I said, why are you looking? Why are you standing over me? And he said, stop praying in those tongues. I can hear you all the way in the nightclub. <laughs> my husband got saved that night because of my diligence to pray him through. Will you get a diligence? Will you stand in the diligence of God's word, God's word and follow through and let God do a work in you and do a work in your household? He's ready to do it. And, and I bind every spirit that would try to discourage you in the name of Jesus. I come against every lying spirit in Jesus name because the, because the enemy is a liar. He's a father of lies. He's deceitful. I break the power of that spirit right now that's dwelling in your household. And I command freedom to worship God in spirit and truth in your household in Jesus name. I come against that demonic spirit that has discouraged you and have placed you into a place of despondency and despair. I command you loose now into the spirit of God and to the things of God. And to the majesty of God in the name of Jesus. And I pray that, that God will bring you into a household of faith. That will stand with you. And bring you into the truth. So that you may be made free. I want to thank you for listening to me today on WUCC 99.9. A, a place of truth. And, and, and the thing I love about this station. Is that this station preaches the word 24-7. You can hear the truth here. And I pray that as you're listening, that God will release a truth that you can use and that you can pray through and you can become all that God has called you to be. Listen, my friends, you do not want to get to heaven. And God says, I want to show you something. Here was your plan and here was mine. Because God's plan is far greater than anything that you can conjure up. Listen to this. We're still looking at Jesus being the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. The Bible says, having chose them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. 
and having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. God has called us. He has chosen us. And so if God has called us and he's chosen us, shouldn't we be going to him every day to get the truth of what he's called us to walk in? Hmm. You, you, you know, when I, when I think about jobs, God did not put you on a job. God put you on an assignment. And so there are some people that, you know, maybe they have retired. Maybe they have come out. Of, maybe they have come out of the workplace and God has sent you back to what you may think this work. I say God has put you on an assignment. And so many times we leave jobs because we are displeased, but we never ask God, should we have left the assignment? And so you leave the job looking for another job to only keep hitting the wall because many times when we get an assignment from God, very often he doesn't give us another assignment. And so now you're unemployed because you left the assignment. You know, it's, it's like teaching. You know, I was an educator for many, many years. And when you give a student an assignment, you know, just because it's hard, you don't just throw in the towel and say, oh, I'm not doing it because that assignment very well is the door for you to go to the next grade. <laughs> so you say, OK, well, I'm, well, I'm going to fail math. But but that's part of the assignment. So if you don't pass the assignment, guess what? You don't go to the next grade. And so either way, the assignment must be fulfilled. So I said that to say this, that many of you are very discontent in where you are. I want God to give you the truth about where you are. You know, I'm not just a wife. I'm on assignment. I, I just did not raise a daughter. Yes, I'm a mother, but I, I raised a prophet, a dancer for the kingdom of God. We're raising our children for kingdom glory, for kingdom purpose. The people that we come to meet every day, they're in our lives for kingdom purpose. But many times we miss kingdom purpose because somebody comes along and say, well, you know something? I really want you to be careful with that person because they're blah, 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 blah. Well, God has a lot to say. I call it a tail-bearing spirit. Let me see, can I find that scripture? I have it somewhere. I wrote it down. I want to say it was in Proverbs, the spirit of the tail-bearer. It talks about the seven things that God hates. I think it's the seven things that God hates. Is that right, Pastor? It's over there. Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Thank you. And so the Bible says that whatever things are pure, whatever things are holy, whatever things are good report, the Bible tells us to think on those things. And so you don't understand that many times <laughs> you have been praying for something for years and all of a sudden God sends the answer through a vessel because many times God will use people to take you to your next wealthy place. So I think we have to understand sometimes we don't think that the enemy can move in the church. Sometimes we have saints that will come to you and they'll say, well, you know, um, you know, I have your best interest in mind. I want to tell you about blah, 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 blah. You know, you might not want to deal with them, blah, 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 blah. But you have to understand, is that a good report? Is that pure? Is that holy? Is that a good report? And you don't know why you're sitting there listening to that person and you're taking on that lie, not the truth. You could be missing your next wealthy place. Before I read Proverbs chapter six, verse 16 through 19, I want to tell you this little story. My, me and my husband was in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And that night I had, I had a dream. And in this dream, I was, I just seen all these little deaths. I was in a classroom, all these little deaths, because I thought that God still wanted me to uh, stay home as a stay at home mom. So here I am. I see in this dream, I see all these little classrooms, <laughs> the room, very immaculate, everything kind of set up because you know, I am a person of excellence. So, you know, it, the, the room was just beautiful, but it was a classroom. So the next morning when I woke up, I be, as I began to write the dream down, God said to me, he says, I want you to go to the school board at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. He says, I want you to apply for a teaching position. Well, it was February. So instead of me following God's instructions, I go to someone that worked at the system. And so I went to her and I said, I believe God's called me to go and fill out an application to get a teaching position. She looks at me and she says, they're not going to hire you in February. It's too late in the year. They're not going to hire you. So I just sat there and looked at her. I said, okay. I said, then, you know, whatever. So I was walking back to my car and literally I heard God scream at me. And he says, what did I tell you to do? He said, did I ask you to go get someone else's advice? Or did I tell you to go fill out the application? 
So I went and filled out the application. And the very next day, I got three interviews for three teaching positions. You have got to follow and listen to God, not the voice of the talebearer, because you can miss the next open door, listening to people that, first of all, many times don't pray, because if they prayed, they would not be bringing you a negative report about somebody that they don't even know. Let me read Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. This is what it says. There are six things the Lord hates. No seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hand that kills the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in a family. Hey, that's it in a nutshell. So if you're in the body of Christ and you are sowing discord within the family, God hates that. And I'm going to tell you that behavior is going to separate you in your relationship with your king. I don't know about you, but I don't need to be separated from God because, look, you don't ever know when you're going to need him. And you might not have time to say, God, forgive me. Uh, I repent of that. You might have not. You might not have time for that. And if you are one that is bearing a false witness who pours out lies against people, then you're causing discord. And the Bible talks about where there is confusion. There is every evil work. That's a spirit. And you need to get delivered from that. Because there are people that God are sending into other people's lives because the person that's coming to talk to you is jealous and full of envy and full of strife. If you're listening to them, you're going to lose and you're going to miss your next wealthy place. God is not into that. God is into truth. Do you know the truth about where God is taking you right now? Because this is definitely the year of the open door. And my friend, you do not want to miss it. I want to give you a definition of truth. And this is the definition that God gave me. Truth is what is consistent with the mind and the will and the character and the glory of God and the being of God. That's truth. My truth flows with God. This closes the conversation. Anything outside of myself, I don't want to hear it. That's the key. And many times when I'm going back to the talebearer. Many times when people come to me with a negative report, if you listen to that, you're just as responsible and just as guilty for not listening to the truth. Because you have the strength, you have to get the truth, the strength within yourself and say, you know something, that is not truth. That does not line up with who I serve. We have to not be intimidated to tell people the truth. I'm going to read to you John 18, 36 through 37. I, I love this because here's Jesus standing before Pilate. Because we have to get so spiritual that we understand that this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Let me read this to you, John 18, 36 through 37. It says, John, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If, I, if it were, my follow, followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, so you're a king. <laughs> so, so, you know, here's, here's Pilate trying to say who Jesus is. And Jesus responded, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into this world to testify to the truth. All who love truth recognize what I say is true. What is the world trying to say? Say who and what you are. How can anyone outside of you say who you are, where you're going, what you're going to be? I, mean, I, I thank God for the prophetic word. But there again, my friend, at the end of the day, it's left up to you to seek God's face and say, God, who am I and who have you called me to be? That's the key. You know, years ago, and it's been very many, 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 many years I was going to school to be a nurse. I wanted to be a nurse so bad. Oh, I wanted to be a nurse. So here I was in my junior year. And back then in your junior year, you had to choose um, a major. I, I took the nursing exam. I failed it four times, four times. And finally, my professor, she got in my face and she says, honey, she's are you sure this is what you want to do? So after that point, I go down to the Riverwalk. And 
I get before the Lord and for the very first time I close my eyes and I say, God, what do you want me to do? And I had my eyes closed. And at that time, God gives me a vision and God gives me a vision of me standing behind a pulpit. <laughs> I laughed and I said, God, you're crazy. I am not doing that. But I would tell you in the purpose and in the truth of God, I never been happier. I would not trade what I do for the world. God has called me. He has chosen me. He has set me apart to do what I do. You know, the Bible says your gift will make room for you. And many times that that passage is preached about money. You know, you give money it'll open the door for you, you know, whatever. But I'm a firm believer that that passage needs to be preached about the gifting that God is putting you. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but when I was born, I didn't come here with a lot of money, but I did come here with a gift. And when I got saved and began to yield who I am to the Holy Spirit, God brought me into this gift, released the Holy Spirit on it, released the supernatural on it. And my life has never been the same. Every day is a different day. Every day is a changed day because I have made up my mind to walk in the gifting and the, and the calling and the talent that God has released in me. I, I don't have time to try to be anybody else. God has called me by name. He has chosen me for such a time as this. This is my season. This is my purpose. And God has chosen me. He has called me to preach the gospel and to release truth and to wake up your inner man, to breathe on those dead places in your life that you may come forth fit for the master's use. That is what God has chosen me for to the point that I, I just have an issue. I can't stand to see people stuck because you don't have to be stuck. And so today I want you to make up your mind that you are going to walk in the fullness of God, that you're going to walk in the chosen uh, gifting that God has called you to walk in for such a time as this. Listen, when God created you, he threw away the mold the mole. You know, there are many preachers, there's many teachers, there's many um, inspirational speakers, but there is a twist on it that nobody can do like you. You must step to the plate and be and do who God has called you to be and do. And only way you can do that, you have got to spend time with God you got to know God. You got to pray when God wakes you up in the midnight hour, when God wakes you up at three o'clock in the morning, you have to get up because there, those are times that he wants to impart into you. He wants to pour into you and nobody can do it but him because he has the diagram. He has, um, what do you want to call it? The architects, the, the thing that they use. Uh, I have a name for it. Um, the, the blueprint. Yes. Thank you. He has the blueprint of who you are to become. You don't know what that blueprint is. And yes, God can still open up the prophetic voice. God can open up the word of wisdom. And that's all wonderful. But at the end of the day, you still have to get before him. You still have to lay before him. And you have to make sure that that thing is molded into the image that he sees. I thank God for the blueprint of who I am that lays before him. I'm very thankful. And, and listen, my friends. I'm very happy. I'm very thankful for spiritual leaders because they do impart into us. But you must make time to get before the Lord yourself. You know, I, I hear people all the time complaining and, and just bashing leaders. But God has given you the ability to read yourself. And, you know, even those that cannot read, God has put the word on DVD. He's he's put it on CD. He's put it on everything. So there would be no excuse for you to miss your calling and purpose in God. There would be no reason. So I want to encourage you to get before the Lord, to show up in prayer. Every Saturday morning, I have a prayer call from seven o'clock to eight o'clock. And I want to give you that number. That number is seven one two. 775-7031 712-775-7031 and once you dial that number you'll be given a code the code is 878-522-806 878-522-806 many times when I'm on that call God will say that he will do a 
third watch, a fourth, fourth watch prayer, which you can be invited to. Many times on that call, God will say, we're going to do a midnight prayer on this such and such date. You may say, well, I have never did a midnight prayer. Well, here's the time for you to be trained. I do it all the time. And I'm going to tell you something. Miracles happen in the midnight. And you want to be a part of that. Well, as I said earlier, I've um, my CD today is going to be you can purchase it at um, Fully Armored Bookstore in Aiken, South Carolina. It will be there. The price is fifteen dollars. I want you to go there. I want you to get your CD presence soaking in the presence of the Lord. Today, we're going to listen to presence of release. The Holy Spirit wants to release you and to into your purpose and into your destiny. And so we're going to play the presence of release. I want you to find a seat. I want you to sit down. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to come into agreement with what the Holy Spirit is saying on this CD that you may be released into the fullness and into the truth that God has called you into before the foundations of the earth. Presence. The power of the Holy Spirit, we're activating the words of the Lord according to you. That you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're blessed going in and blessed going out. Blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Isaiah 60 says, Arise Jerusalem. Arise Zion. Let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Look and see for everyone is coming. Your sons are coming from a distant land. Your daughters will be carried home. Your eyes will shine and your heart will be thrilled with joy. Your merchants will come from all around the world to see you. They will bring you wealth from many lands. There are ships from the ends of the earth, from lands that trust in me, led by great ships of Tarshish. They are bringing people of Israel home from far away, carrying their silver and gold. They will honor the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for He has filled you with splendor. Foreigners will come to rebuild your towns, and their kings will serve you. But though I have destroyed you in my anger, I will now have mercy on you through my grace. Your gates will stay open day and night to receive wealth of many lands. Kings of the world be led, will be led as captives in victory procession. You are great in the land. You are great in my heart. You are great in my mind, thus saith the Lord. The kings of the world will be led captive, and the victory procession has begun for you. For the nations will refuse to serve you, that refuse to serve you will be destroyed. The glory of Lebanon will be yours. The forest of Cyprus, fear and pine, the beauty of my sanctuary will be yours. My temple will be glorious. The descendants of your torments, tormentors will come and bow before you. Those who despise you will kiss your feet. They will call you the city of the Lord and Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Though you were once despised and hated, no one traveling through you will make you beautiful again and forever. Powerful kings and mighty nations will satisfy your every need as though you were a child. You will know at last, I am the Lord your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel. I will exchange your bronze for gold and your iron for silver, your wood for bronze and your stone for iron. I will make you a peaceful leader and righteousness will be your ruler. Violence will disappear from your land and the desolation and destruction of war will end. I decree and declare that salvation will surround you like a city wall and praise will be on your lips for all to enter in. No longer will you need the sun to shine by day nor the moon to give you light by night. For the Lord your God will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set, your moon will not go down. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, 
your days of mourning has come to an end. All your people will be righteous. They will possess their land forever. For I will plant them there with my own hands in order to bring my glory. The smallest family will become a thousand people and the tiniest group will become a mighty nation. At the right time, this is the time I, the Lord, has made it happen. You're released into your place of destiny. You're released into your place of purpose. You're released, my son, my daughter, into my presence. Walk with me, for lo, I am with you. Thus saith the Lord. Well, we give God the glory. I pray that you feel released. There's three other tracks on this CD, which is very, very powerful. That one is one of my favorites. That's really anointed by the Holy Spirit. I had a friend that called me and she said she was listening to track three, which is called The Presence of Knowing. And she said that when she began to wake up, she says that she's seen the eyes of God looking in her eyes. Uh, that That is just so amazing and just so awesome. So you can pick up your copy at Fully Armored Bookstore here in Aiken, South Carolina. It will be there today. It's fifteen dollars. You want to get it? I want to. Con I want to say to you, um, you know, many times people like to listen to these kind of CDs while they're driving. I suggest no soaking and driving, <laughs> because what happens is is that when you begin to listen to a CD uh, of this magnitude, it begins to relax you and it begins to allow your spirit man to become stronger than your flesh man, and you will find yourself beginning to soar into the spirit so I uh, my suggestion to you is that you would take the CD and that you would get yourself very comfortable in bed put it on repeat and allow the word of God that's within this CD to begin to change you from the inside out let God heal your wounded soul so that you will come into the image and purpose of who he is we have about three more minutes maybe four I want to read to you Psalms 24 which I believe is so awesome because I believe that there is a gate that God wants to open for you today this is the year of the open door and we uh there is a door uh today there's a door that god is opening that no man can shut so i want to read psalms 24 to you the earth is the lord's and everything in it the world and all his all his people belong to him for he laid the earth's foundation in the seas and built it on the ocean depths who may climb the mountain of the lord who may stand in his holy place only those whose hands and hearts are pure who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, with God, their savior. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence. O God of Jacob, open up eights of gate, ancient gates, open up ancient doors and let the King of glory come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors and let the King of glory enter in. Who is, this king of glory the lord of heaven's army he is the king of glory father we bless you in the name of jesus we thank you father that you're opening doors my king that no one can shut father god we thank you lord god that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places we thank you father that your name is a great name and father we command every one of those principalities and powers that bow down to the name of jesus we thank you father that your name is high and lifted up and we bless you father that your train fills the temple father let your glory rest on your people today and as you open doors father and open gates to your people in Jesus name amen well I pray that you've learned something fabulous today it's been a glorious day the glory of the Lord is in here you better come and partake hallelujah we're full I want to bless you I know that my God is insanely able to do more than you could ever ask or think the only thing you have to do my friend is show up and as we said earlier we want you to stop seeing what you believe and start believing what you see. It only happens as you're a partaker of God's word. Again, thank you so much for joining me. Dr. Pauline Hughes, Spiritual Mind, Spiritual You. <laughs>